Tonight on Wise Guy. Don't you just love the crackle of an open fire? Kind of reminds me of Christmas time at Grandma's. You sleep with him if you have to, but don't fall in love with him. It's gonna be a hell of a storm. Just don't know whether it's gonna be rougher out there or in here. Push her off the boat. No. You don't seem to understand, Vinny. You don't have a choice. You're wrong, Mel. You don't think I'll kill you, do you? Ever tell you what my favorite time of year is? Oh, but I wish you would. I'm sure it'd make life worth living. Oh, is this gig getting to you? You know, you wake me up in the middle of the night, you pull me out of a dream that's worth at least 10 Hail Marys. Third time this month, you tell me there's a bomb on Mel's <laughs> yacht. Maybe it is getting to me a little bit. My favorite time of year is anytime Mel's depressed. As you know, Three or four days, maybe a week, he'll be lying in his bed, covers over his head, paralyzed because he can't decide what shirt to put on. The only trouble with Mel's depressions is that he comes out of them. You mean like now? Exactamente. He still thinks that half the civilized world is conspiring against him. Well, if it's just paranoia, then what are we doing here? I suppose he's right. There's gonna be a hundred people on his boat day after tomorrow. Among them, my most favorite person in the whole wide world. How many times have you swept this tub? Uh, more times than I can count. And how many bombs have you found? None. Until now. You ever think about how you're gonna die? Yeah. Always hoped it'd be old age. What do you think of this? I don't know. Might be a timer or a trembler switch. I don't want to take a chance on moving it. There's no timer. I don't see any wires in the tape. Of course, they could be using microcircuitry. Those wires are a tenth the size of a human hair, damn near invisible. There's no tripwire inside, and we're still alive. I want you to shine the light inside so I can see the detonator.
Here's to adrenaline. Nectar of the gods. Mel. That son of a bitch. Hey, how you doing, Vinny? What you been up to? Oh, not too much, Mel. I was watching my life flash before my eyes while Roger was taking apart your phony bomb. So you found it. Good. I'm glad. I was worried that security had been slacking off. Mm-hmm. You got to admit, I'm fun to be around. Good night, Mel. <laughs> There's nothing like palpable death to get the old juices flowing. Exhilarating and terrifying at the same time, it's... It's kind of like love, I suppose. Now, don't be mad. I don't want you to be. Now, put your sneaks on. We're going to go hit a few balls. Wade Boggs model. Well, it's 4 o'clock in the morning. Well, this place has lights. I'm sure it's closed. Well, ordinarily, yeah. But I gave the guy 10 grand, so it's open. Now, show him the heat. Yeah! That's solid, then. Come on, come on. Hey, you know, you look good in double knits. I was raised in them. <laughs> hey, Bobby, remind me to thank you later for letting us in the locker room. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, we got a hitter here. <laughs> you played organized ball, didn't you? American Legion. Yeah, hot corner. <laughs> I wore the tools of ignorance. A catcher? I can see it. I can see you blocking the plate from those runners coming in from third. Well, see me in traction, too? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bobby, look alive. You're going to have some rockets coming back at you. Come on, Bobby. We're in the I hope Mel didn't take Come you away from anything important. No more change. I was alone, I Susan. Some heaters in here. Hey! All right, Mel. That's a dinger. <laughs> 400 yards over the left wall, the crowd's going wild. 400 yards? <laughs> Come on, Mel, I'm exhausted. Let's go. All right, well, you go wait in the car, honey. We'll be done in a minute. Well, Mel, what position did you play? We moved around pretty much. We were never in one place, so, uh, you know, there was the sandlot stuff, but. Uh, yeah. What I wanted more than anything was to wear a number on my back, you know what I mean? A big number seven, just like the Mick. Okay, last pitch. Bottom of the ninth, two out, full count, bases loaded. There is no joy in Mudville. You know, I used to fall asleep at the radio listening to the games from Yankee Stadium. I could see Mantle and Barra and Ford performing their magic. God, it was, it was as clear as if I'd had box seats. Those were the days, Vinny. Those were the days heroes walked the earth. I can't wait anymore. I gotta tell you, I'm gonna buy a team. What? Yeah, there's a new franchise in Sacramento. I'm gonna buy them. I'm gonna buy this place, too. Mel, we're in Vancouver. Yeah, I know, but I'm gonna move them here. That's why I've been coming out here nights. I gotta get myself in shape. Mel, just because you own a team doesn't mean you can play. But you're wrong, Vinny. That's exactly what it means. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It was Thanks. great fun. Thanks. Is he serious about buying that Sacramento franchise? When it comes to acquisitions, Mel is always serious. Hmm. Yeah, I know he likes the game, but why does he want to be an owner? The most important reason? Because it's something he doesn't have. Hmm. Isn't that what we all want? What are the other reasons? Darling. Yeah? Friday night, the cruise. I want you to deliver a guest. Who? Eddie Von Platt. It's very important to Mel that he be there, OK? Having fun, kids?
Mel? Stop it right now! What is the matter with you? I could turn this place into a junkyard in five minutes, and not you or anyone else can stop me. Everything here is mine, and I can break it if I want to. Ow! Everything here is here because it pleases me, and it's here for as long as it pleases me. And when it stops pleasing me, I'll get rid of it! Mel, breaking my neck. You're not falling in love with him, are you? Please tell me you aren't. If you fall in love with him, then I'd be alone. I'd disappear. We've known all of this couldn't last. We've always known it. When you're standing on top of Everest, there's only one direction left. Stay with me, Susie. Until it's over. Mel, I'm not going anywhere. You promise? Yeah. You know what happens if you break your promise? Yeah, grow a very long nose. You sleep with him if you have to, but don't fall in love with him. I couldn't bear that. I couldn't. You smell it. The city smells. Well, it's fresh air, Frank. You'll get used to it. Just a matter of time. Time? I'll give you some time. There's a three-hour time difference between here and Atlantic City. And the RD wants a daily report filed. I call him, he's out to lunch. He calls me back, I'm grabbing a sandwich. By the time I get back, he's on the way home. The next morning, we start the whole thing all over. You know, you pay $150 for a suit, you expect the buttons to stay on. That's why they sell needles and thread, Frank. Well, Frank, relax. You know, it's just a button. It's not just a button. We're talking about the collapse of national pride here. We've already lost the auto industry. Nobody in the States can make a stereo, and now they can't keep my buttons on. Frank, what's bugging you? Nothing. What the hell's the matter with Frank? Ah, he's grumpy. So, what's new among the lifestyles of the rich and vicious? Listen, you know anything about a guy named Eddie Van Platt? Yeah, a real estate magnate born with a silver spoon in his mouth that he's turned it to service for a thousand. Any indication that he did any business with profit? Well, I don't know of any. I mean, the guy's become a legend in his spare time. He builds condos, he's got two shipping companies, dog tracks in Florida, a new franchise in the American League, and... Wait a minute, wait a minute. He owns a baseball team? Yeah, in Sacramento, I think. Profit said he wanted to buy that franchise. Well, all I know is that Van Platt is rated break ground of the stadium. May I interject a point here? Who cares? Look, Frank, I'm supposed to pick up this Van Plagg guy and bring him to Mel's boat for a party on Friday. Now, I wouldn't want to be the guy that has what Mel wants, you know what I mean? Hey, wait a minute. I mean, this Van Plant is connected to profit, and then you can get him to turn over. Now, now, what kind of carrot am I going to be able to dangle if I don't even know he's dirty? Well, we'll find something, Vince. As I recall, the third letter in FBI stands for investigation. And you get on that boat, you don't let Van Plant out of your sight. Yeah, well, that's going to be tough, Frank. People at Mel's parties tend to get naked in groups. You know, from certain angles, they all look the same. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll talk to Lococo. Maybe he knows what Prophet and Van Plant have going. Hello, Roger. Jacqueline DeVries? I met you at the Prophets two summers ago. Am I true? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you and I have a thing, or were you with Mel? Mel? Thank you. Never expected to see you again. 
I could tell by the warmth of your greeting. A lot of faces go through those revolving doors. After a while, they... Look, I have to see him. I have to see Mel. Oh, sweet thing. You know the way it works. When you're gone, you're gone. You had your moment. It's over. Just take me to him, Roger. How important is it to you? <laughs> Everything is still a test. We all have our limits. I would just like to see what yours are. Meeting Mel was like going into a toy store for the first time, wasn't it? Everything shiny, new. And all you had to do was reach out and grab hold of all the goodies. Well, how long did it take you to figure it out that the toy was you? Lovely to look at. Thrilling to hold. But nothing so useless as a toy that's grown old. Not an old toy to you, is she? Jacqueline, Vinny, who knows? Maybe she's still good for a couple of laughs. Hey, Roger's just your basic all-American boy. Took a sharp right somewhere. Roger and I were new on the scene together. I was surprised to hear he was still around. Mel and Susan usually clean house every year, so. What did you say your name was again? Vinny. Vinny. I like Vincent better. Do you mind? No, why don't you let me get you a hotel room? You look beat. I'm not completely. So, Vincent, how long have you been around? Long enough to know the players from the payers. Is there a difference? Jackie, come on. You let that guy throw those ball bearings six inches from your head, you never even flinched. He's either losing his eye or his nerve. He used to part people's hair with those. Do you ever wonder why he does things like that? I wonder why people let him. De Stefano feels that the gold market presents an excellent opportunity. We have physical possession of 200,000 ounces in the vaults in London and The Hague. Now, you make arrangements to get Van Platt to the boat? Yes. Vinny's going to take him. Van Platt is such a smug little bastard, don't you think? He's got no idea what's coming. No idea that I've known about his treachery for two years. You have no proof that Eddie Van Platt... The Mexican deal was mine until he let Vizina and Calderon move in. The proof is they're moving the dust into Texas and Louisiana, and I'm not. My God, Susan, am I the only one who can see it? Am I the only one who isn't fooled and blinded by treachery and selfishness? I'm glad I didn't have him killed when I first discovered the truth. What a waste that would have been. Did you get all the names of the casinos that have extended him credit? Yeah, Slater's working on it. I must have them before we cruise. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> An announcement will be made within 48 hours that the Department of Defense is canceling its jet fighter contract with Unidac Industries. It's some problem with substandard parts. Where did they come from? Friends of ours. Get Tony on the phone, have him liquidate our position immediately. Unidac stock is all going to but disappear. Which one do you like better? The pinstripes are nice. Yeah, they're my favorites, too. You know why the Yankees wear them? Mel, you haven't had an hour of sleep in four days. Because Babe Ruth got fat. The owner knew that if you put a fat man in pinstripes, he's going to look thinner. So, it'll be pinstripes for the home uniform. Oh, and get Roger for me, will you, Susie? There's something I want him to do for me tonight. Susie. Forgive me for shouting. It's the, the usual, I suppose. New York at 16. I live with the photographer who shot my covers. 
than Paris and Geneva. I almost married the grandson of the last king of Italy. Didn't you go through with it? He was killed. Oh, sorry. By a bottle of champagne. We were making love in his parents' villa, and a magnum of Dom Perignon fell and fractured his skull. I guess it beats getting hit by a garbage truck. I wasn't in love with him, though. But marriage seemed like a good idea at the time. I've never told anybody that before. So how'd you meet Mel? Well, you know the line from Casablanca? Everybody comes to Rick's. Well, I lived in a world of glamour. His was a world of wealth. Worlds collide. Being with Mel was like riding the tail of a comet. Yeah, but you decided to leave. And from what I've seen, most people hang on as long as they can. After one night of particularly strenuous depravity, I looked in the mirror. And I didn't recognize myself. You know, all my life, I've been an ornament for one man or another. I just wanted to see if I could live by myself, for myself. The truth is, I can't. I need the rush, Vincent. I'm addicted to the life. I have no choice. Come on. There are only choices you want to make and choices you don't. When he's in the mood, nobody lives like Mel Prophet. And once you've lived with him, the rest of the world seems very dark and very cold. If you live too close to the flame, you're going to get burned. But before you burn, at least you get warm. Eight minutes, 40 seconds, but What the hell are you doing here? I've been looking for you. I called you here, you were gone. I went back to my place and the sweet thing was gone. You know, you could have killed her with that ball bearing stunt. She's alive, isn't she? Yeah, but she's hurt and scared. And the last thing she needs is to be out at that circus floating in the harbor. What do you think I was trying to tell her? Hope you two don't have any early plans for tonight. Mel's got a job for us. What is it? There's a construction site on Beach and Lafayette. Going to be a condo complex, except it's not. What, we're going to blow it? Too much noise, and I hate the dust. So we're going to sing a torch song. For what? I forgot to ask. Pick you up at 11.30. Don't worry, it won't be late. She can light your fire after we light this one. Agent 4587, day code, USA Entertainment, Fox Nation Thriller. Well, how's it going, Sergeant Preston? Listen, I need McPike to alert some uniformed locals to patrol the area around Beach and Lafayette tonight at midnight. Why uniforms? The Prophet wants a building torch, and Lacoco and I are going to be the firebugs. Beach and Lafayette. I got it, Vinny. We'll cover. So he says to her, a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. Since when does the price include a ninety-eight dollar tip, huh? <laughs> uh... All right, so I'm no comedian. Well, that I already know. This is McPike. My watch says 11.55. All right, now let's nobody get antsy, girls. Wait for him to get inside the fence and start futzing around first. Frank, what's going on? Hey, you've been snapping at me for the past couple of days now. So I figure you either read a book about Pearl Harbor or you're homesick. You have kids? Yeah. I have a boy. Good boy. He's in the school orchestra. He plays the oboe. School had a concert tonight. It was his first concert. And I missed it by 3,000 miles. There'll never be a first concert again. I think he and I got cheated out of a memory. What are we doing here, Roger? Beach and Lafayette's 12 blocks from here. I know the city. This isn't even the place we're supposed to torch. Yes, it is. What was the charade all about? I don't know. Ask Mel.
Perimeter units, have you seen any activity? Unit two, negative. Unit one, negative. This is real subtle, Roger. Why don't we just get some napalm and really do the job? I believe your point is being lost by you. Mel wants to make sure that even a blind man could see this was arson. Man, this place is gonna go up like a rocket. Plenty of time for you and the sweet thing. Perimeter units, you guys awake or what? Nobody's even walked past the fence. It's dead out here. Ah, the last thing this town needs is more condos. Maybe Eddie will build a playground for the kiddies. Eddie? Van Plant, one of Mel's old associates. Don't you just love the crackle of an open fire? Kind of reminds me of Christmas time at Grandma's. I don't like this, Kenny. Mel's my sugar. I mean, he probably changed the whole deal. Let's call lifeguard. Then he's probably. <laughs> hey, morning, pal. Say, Mel, what do you think, huh? Yeah, it looks good on you, Mel. It's a lot better than the clown suits we had on the other night. Hey, hey, let it billow out a little till I drop a few pounds. The best. Oh, yeah. And you pick any number you want. Now, where do you think we ought to have spring training? I hate Florida. It's only good for business. How about uh, Arizona, New Mexico? What do you think of Santa Fe, huh? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, Santa Fe. Yeah, all right, enough. Thank you, Mr. Prophet. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very good job you and Roger did last night. Over $3 million damage. I'm very impressed, Vinny. You know, I can't take credit for this one, Mel. Roger ran the show. But you learned something. That's why I wanted you to go along. Every experience should be a learning experience. Listen, do you remember anybody by name? Hi. Oh, you look so cute. You like it, kid? Oh, it has a certain elegance. Don't you think so, Vinny? Oh, yeah, that's definitely the word I'd use, yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing you in it. Listen, I've made arrangements with Van Platt's people. Vinny and Roger are going to pick him up tonight at 9 and take him directly to the boat. Well, wait a minute. You don't need both of us to pick up one guy. Eddie knows Roger. It'll make him feel more comfortable. Oh, here's the address. Okay. Well, Vinny, you wanted to ask me about something? Oh, uh, no, it's not important. I'll see you tonight. All right, try it on. Let me know how it fits. Okay, Mel. I checked with the captain. He's expecting rough seas tonight. Perfect. Listen, Roger and I are supposed to pick up this guy tonight for the cruise. His name's Eddie Van Platt. You're kidding. After the way Mel carried on about their Mexican deal? What, they were business partners? Once. Eddie owned a baseball team down in Mexico. He may still own it. He used it to carry cocaine. He supplied Mel's Southern California operation. But there was a problem. Mel said that Eddie split the market. Did he? Does it matter? Mel thought he did. He must have patched up their differences. What are you going to do if Mel doesn't want to see you? Remind him of what he said when I was leaving. I wouldn't make it on my own. And sooner or later, I'd be back. <laughs> Mel loves hearing he's right. I'm going to buy dinner tonight. I hear there's a great new sushi joint nearby. You really eat that stuff? Frank. 
Now you tell me what the hell happened last night. We were all the way across town when the fire started. Yeah, I know, I know. This isn't a trusting environment, Frank. Either Mel gave Roger the wrong address or Roger was doing a number on me. I couldn't try to get a hold of you. I would have given myself away. You know who owned that complex? Eddie Van Plett. Now, he owns a baseball team in the Mexican League, too. He was using it to transport drugs. He and Mel were partners until they had some kind of a falling out. Where'd you get this? From a source who had no reason to lie. Don't worry about it. Yeah, well, it's going to take a little time to check it out. Now, we'll be cruising just outside the breakwater tonight. We should be back by 2, 3 in the morning. You stay clear of Van Platt when you dock, in case we want to make the grab. All right. And Vinny, if these guys got old scores to settle, you find yourself a neutral corner and you just watch. How about a taco? Cabo? No, no, I, I sold that shack when the blue hairs moved in. <laughs> I bought an island off the Yucatan. I'm building a house there designed by Warnick. 25,000 square feet. Nice. Mel, look who's come back to us. You remember Jacqueline, don't you? Sure, you were away. 25,000 square feet? What are you going to do, put in a gift shop or what? <laughs> come with me. I'd like you to meet some of the newer people. Hi, baby. There's a group gathering in the playroom. Want to play? <laughs> Uh, I tell you what, why don't you keep a place warm for me, all right? I'll do that. Okay. Uh, the captain says he can't get inside the breakwater before the storm hits. He suggests that we drop the anchor and ride it out. All right, tell anyone who wants to leave that the cigarette will take him back to port. Hey, Eddie, you want to get something to eat? Yeah, sure. Mel, no, could we go to the stateroom and talk? <laughs> That's a nice meat. She looks familiar. Yeah, don't they all? Hey, listen, Eddie, I hear you got the Sacramento franchise. Yeah. I was so smooth with those owners, you could have skated on me. I'm going to build the largest dome stadium in the country. 75,000 seats. You going to ship the dope in the bats like the old days? What, are you kidding? This is Major League Ball. 100% legitimate. At the winter meetings, I'm going to uh, be sitting next to Steinbrenner. <laughs> <laughs> I want it. I want your team. Fill in any number you want, Eddie. Twenty-four hundred. You just bought yourself two season boxes. At the ballpark. <laughs> They're gonna be ferrying people off this barge. Why don't you come back to town with me? I own the Regency. The house is plenty big for two people. I'm with Mel tonight. Anybody told him? <laughs> he seems attracted. What did you say her name was again? Just a girl who wants to come in from the cold. Roger. I don't care who leaves on that cigarette, but Eddie and that girl aren't going anywhere. wondered why you left us. And Mel was very, very hurt. Mel doesn't remember who I am. No. You know, showing affection, especially in front of other people, has always been difficult for him. But he missed you, Jacqueline. And he's very glad that you're back.
You'll stay on board with us, won't you? Yeah, I'll stay. I wish I was on that cigarette. First to admit it, but I'm not a rough weather sailor. Where's Mel? Try the playroom? They're breaking out the vegetable oil. He said he was gonna hold that boat for me. This ship's as seaworthy as they come, Mr. Van Platt. You got nothing to worry about. I don't want to be stuck here all night. That cigarette comes back, you'll be on it. Yeah. You're predicting a bad storm? I never heard of a good one. Oh, you feeling good, baby? Yeah, you're feeling good. Gonna be a hell of a storm. Just don't know whether it's gonna be rougher out there or in here. Do you forgive me now? Forgive you for what? For taking so long to realize that this is where I belong. Sure, I forgive you, baby. I'd like to get to the rail, but I don't think I'd make it. I want off this boat, Mel. Now. The cigarette will be right back, Eddie. That's what I said two hours ago. Why don't you relax, Eddie? You're among friends. Have another drink. You reconsider my offer? For the team. Would 10 million be a fair price? I wouldn't even cover the cost of the balls and bats. All right, 20 then. You're wasting your time, Mel. The team is not for sale. <laughs> Everything's for sale, Eddie. Suppose I add a little sweetener to the deal. What kind of sweetener? An extra player. A player to be named now. Why don't you take Eddie up to the playroom, huh? And make him happy? Mel. What do you say? Sounds like a, a prospect worth considering. No, Hey, please. consider it your readmission price, huh? I'm presenting you with an option. You can come back to the world that offers you nothing but the excitement you crave, or you can go back to a world that offers you nothing. The choice is yours. Like you just lost your best friend. Yeah. Frank. Yeah, I got the report from the Federales on Van Plant's Mexican ball team. In the last year and a half, the manager and four players have been arrested for transportation with intent. Okay. You faxed me a copy, Stat. We'll put the pieces together from here. All right, Kenny, let's roll. We got ourselves a Mexican connection to Mel Profit. Seems like you're going through an awful lot of trouble just to get a baseball team. It's worth the trouble. It's what I've always wanted. Oh, yeah? Well, what happens after you get it? What'll be the next thing you've always wanted? I mean, what is it you want, Mel? More power, more money? Or just more? What is it? What, did you major in psychology, Vinny? No, but I learned a lot from umpires. I call them the way I see them. You're an insightful man, Vinny. Insightful men can be valuable assets or crippling liabilities. The pause that refreshes. Now we got a deal to discuss. Um, the more I think about it, the less I feel like selling. You want the team that much, huh? Come on, Mal, it's not the team. It's having something that the other guy wants. Something they want and they can't have. That's why I wouldn't sell for 30 million or 50 million. Last thing I need is your money. But you're wrong, Eddie. You need my money more than you can possibly know. You're fired the other night, a $3 million loss. The insurance company will never pay on an arson. I had nothing to do with that fire. I was having some union problems. No one will ever believe it was the union, not with the financial problems you have. What financial problems? 
You son of a bitch. Where's that cigarette? I'm getting out of here. You're not going anywhere, Eddie. Strike one. Vegas and Reno, they're calling in your markers. Almost $3 million. That's strike two. All that stuff uh, your sweet sister is shooting in between your toes, I think it must have killed off a couple of brain cells, Mo. I'm no rookie in this game. You can't muscle me. A couple of markers are called in. The cash is no problem. The team is mine. That's going to stay mine. What did Unidac Industries close at today? 165, 170. 182, 50. By tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock, it'll barely be listed. You're out of your mind. Oh, I guess you haven't heard. The Department of Defense canceled its contracts. Uh, since your uh, investment portfolio is almost exclusively margined with Unidac shares as collateral, <clears throat> and now that Unidac is Unidad, you can't cover your margin calls. You can't get off this boat. Can't call your brokers. You're going to lose, by my calculation, over $96 million. That's strike three, Eddie. You knew you were going to do this. You had this all planned. Why didn't you? Well, because I was enjoying myself too much. Because we were playing a game you had no chance of winning. And because I loved every minute of it. You cut me out of the Mexican deal, and now I'm paying you back. I'm that isn't you back. true. You let Vizine and Calderon into my territory. My territory. I've known the truth, and I've known it for two years. Now, you will sell me that team, won't you? But come to think of it, I think $20 million is much too high a price. I think I ought to be able to pick it up for five, six million max. Nothing compared to what you owe. You can't do this, Mom. I already have. Roger? Take Eddie down to the playroom and lock him in and make sure the telephone is disconnected and there aren't any sharp instruments around. I wouldn't want him to cut himself accidentally. Mr. Van Platt, please. I did what you wanted me to. I made love to him like you wanted me to. Apparently, you weren't very good. I want you out of my sight. Vinny, get rid of her. Mel? I want her off the boat. We're in the middle of the ocean. I want her gone now. You push her, Vinny. I want to hear her body hitting the water. Push her off the boat. No. I said push her, Vinny. You don't think I'll do it, do you? You think I'm playing like the last time? It's a full load, Vinny. You don't think I'll kill you, do you? I don't know what you're gonna do, Mel. I only know what I'm not gonna do. She's nothing, Vinny. She means nothing. The way you see things, that's probably true. Do what I say. You don't seem to understand, Vinny. You don't have a choice. You're wrong, Mel. I have the clearest choice in the world. I'm tired. I'm very tired. I'm gonna go to sleep now. So have you figured it out yet? What's that? Why Mel didn't kill you. Yes. I quit trying to figure him out five minutes after I met him. I have two theories. The first is that he really wants somebody to stand up to him. Just somebody to say no. I mean, we're talking down deep. Yeah, well, that's so deep you could get the bends. What's your second theory? Susan, I know I have choices to make, and I didn't before. 
Thank you, Vinny. Sure. Take care of yourself. When we told Van Platt we knew about Mexico, he practically begged us to testify against profit. We're processing him through the witness protection program now. Good. Hey, did you read the sports page? Oh, well, listen to this. International financier Melvin Profit's bid to purchase the new Sacramento franchise of the American League was rejected by a committee of team owners. Those who could be reached for comment cited Profit's lifestyle, which they felt might cast doubt on the integrity of the game. What did Mick Jagger say? You can't always get what you want, not even if you're Mel Profit. Mel. Don't let the light in, Susie. I want it to be dark. I want it to be dark forever. 